Hey guys, it's Colin again. Um, just thought I should really do a video on the completed pie in the wall. So, uh, obviously I've done all these blog posts about it. Um, they've been pretty popular. I thought the easiest way to kind of get across how the device is in its new form is to really do it in a video. So, here we go. So I've put it up, it's powered by the mains, that's why I've got this ugly tape around it. I don't really want to get electrocuted to be honest. Um, but yeah, um, works really well. I've got a, a white grommet coming for this. Um, I just had a black one uh, available, so I'll just use that for now. That's a, a motion sensor. Um, it's just one of these really cheap ones off eBay uh, or banggood.com. Uh, it's connected um, to one of the GPIOs. Uh, and I'll have a script and it's just going to control the backlight. So if it detects motion within 20 seconds, it'll keep the backlight on or it'll keep it on indefinitely as it detects the motion. Um, in here, it's just a standard uh, USB Wi-Fi stick, one of the nano ones. It's just, you know, the one people recommend to get for the pie. It just works out the box. You get cheaper ones. Um, I had a really, really small one, but uh, it didn't seem to work out the box and I couldn't be bothered. Uh, trying to work out Linux um, driver issues, especially on this because I didn't have the actual network socket available to just plug it in and download updates. So I just paid, what, £7 or something to get that one, just did it. Um, these buttons are all connected to the four buttons on the Pi TFT, uh, so they're all accessible via GPIOs. Um, and yeah, so it just connects to the live um, to uh, 30 volts UK mains. Uh, I use a Vigatronics AC DC adapter, and um, I'll put the data sheet down below. Um, I mean, it's fairly decent 100 milliamps global fuse. Uh, so, yeah, I'll disconnect the power obviously and I'll open it up and show you how it's all uh, laid out inside. So yeah, um, disconnected it, just connected it up to uh, mains wall socket for now. Um, so you can see here, the uh, standard kind of wall socket. This isn't a, a deep one, the one it's going into is slightly deeper. It just fits, it does fit in there. The ones that are slightly deeper are plentiful for that. Um, it's one of these kind of plasterboard cavity sockets, um, boxes that I've got in the wall, so just Connects up in there. Uh, so yeah, if you can imagine this up in the end of the wall, there's a little slot here accessible. So we just get a screwdriver up there and you hear that crack and it just kind of pops away. So what we can do here is lift that up and there we go. Excuse the electrical tape. Still need to kind of sort that out. So if you look in here, um, this is the power supply, supply design. So kind of, I've got a bit of PCB there, kind of protecting the hot side. I don't want to get electrocuted mm. there. But, uh, here we've got ground uh, five volts and three point three volts. And here um, it says reset reset switch. Just ignore that. That um, is a switch for the ground. So that actually comes up to this little switch here and you can access this uh, access this from the wall so you can actually just you know give it a really good hard uh, power on and off because you know it's, it's a full computer running linux i'm going to need to um do a hard restart at some point and i don't want to be taking it off the wall to be doing any of that so if i just remove that there over there. So imagine this is still up in the wall actually, this is kind of the bit that's always fixed. I've kind of countersunk these a little bit. Yeah, I've got some really yeah, kind of small screws uh, and excuse the wire, it's kind of going to be difficult to really grab how it kind of goes. I don't know if you can see that but it kind of the, the screws line up fine and with the deeper box that I've got it does you know fit in there perfectly. So let's put that away for now. And you know this is the this is the main guts of it really. So we've got here the full USB socket and 
I kind of I wanted the full socket there. I could have made it smaller and just soldered the Wi-Fi, right, removed the socket and kind of soldered it directly on there. But I wanted a socket so that if the need arose, I could remove this um, and put in like a hub while it was still on the wall to get like keyboard etc. Uh, at the moment with the Wi-Fi, I'm just using SSH to kind of configure it, do all that stuff. But anyway, um, I'll show you here that that's your the Pi. Um, the back side of it, uh, SD card obviously is removed, it's on the other side with that enameled wire, all the data and power for it. Uh, this is a little heat sink that I had, um, that kind of designed for it. It's re really, really basic, but it seems to do a job. Tests show that it was about two degrees um, of a saving with it on, so yeah, I'll keep it. Right, here is the little control board uh, for the motion sensor on the other side. And here, this is this kind of rough board here. It was actually from the original thermostat. So this was a bog standard room thermostat for our boiler system. And I kind of just sawed the little bit off. This is the actual tactile switch board from it. So it lined up perfectly with these. So I kind of just removed it. Um, kind of cut through traces and just soldered that directly onto the Pi TFT so those wires go off so it's available for the GPIO and then if I get some tweezers um, this is that low profile dip socket assembly that I wrote about if I just get in there and apply a little bit of pressure Pi port will come off uh, and the USB socket is actually you know, hot glued onto it so it's it needs a wee bit more hot glue, but anyway, so that's the innards, sawed off uh, SD card, um, that tantalum cap uh, that I read from that document to help with stability. The regulator's still on there, but the legs are cut, uh, I couldn't be bothered damaging the board anymore, so I just cut it off. Um, the 3v3 and 5 volt rails here um, are tied together, so the Pi runs off 3v3. Uh, the USB here, the data pins uh, are connected to the Pi via the socket here, uh, under here. The power for it is 5 volts and that's directly uh, connected to the, the power supply there. So the USB is 5 volts. Um, this is the switch here, hot glued, so it's nice. Uh, and this is the, <laughs> the heat sink I came up with. So there's, it's kind of like a little clip. Um, and there is some thermal paste under there and these thin bits of copper kind of go off and they're connected to this and like I said it, I didn't expect it to give that much um, of a you know a difference with the temperature but it does give about two degrees of a benefit so I kept that this is the Pi TFT board of course um, I had to kind of hack away at it uh, there a 5 volt to 3v3 the regulator in there I've just bridged it because everything's running off 3v3 so I don't need that and yeah there's a this motion sensor here um, it runs off the 5 volts but the logic level um, of the high signal and logic um, when you know motion is detected uh, it's a 4.4 volt logic level signal so there's a voltage divider in there to get it down to 3.3 volts uh, for the Pi and it's actually connected on the underside of here up to GPIO 4 so that's how that's connected um, so yeah and this just fits back on uh, can i get all the cables out? i mean it is it's a wee bit messy with all these cables and um, especially the you know the power switch here um, it's a little bit longer than it should be but you get it in give it a good wee bit of force in there. And connect the switch back up. Connect the power back up. And if you can imagine it back in the wall, just make sure these cables are connected okay. And Nice. 
and there we go. It's back on there. Mm. So yeah, I'll just quickly plug it in. the wall. See this is going to be up in you know, the wall of my house and um, it's going to just show some statistics of our boiler um, and you know weather for tomorrow that sort of thing. Um, I'm aiming to do some more kind of internet of things, home automation stuff, some sensors maybe outside and this will be the kind of the control hub for it. I've already got Apache, PHP, MySQL, everything all running the services on it. It's got a wee web server. It's running a test web page. Um, so yeah, it, it works really quite well. Um, I've got it running the on-demand governor uh, from 350 megahertz to 500 megahertz, uh, and uh, it's fairly responsive. Um, I did burn-in tests of well probably in the region of six hours um, running uh, and the temperature didn't go above uh, 40 really um, with a really small load um, I ran a burn-in test of the FPU and the integer unit uh, so 100% CPU for two hours constant in this enclosure and it actually had, um, it wasn't this exact one, but it had that kind of covering, so the vent holes, the power supply were kind of, you know, enclosed. Um, and it went up to 42 degrees. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I think it's, I think it's a winner. But, um, yeah. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, leave some comments below if you want to get in touch. And I should have the latest and a blog post about kind of putting it together <laughs> I'll just be kind of repeating what I've said in this video but that'll be up soon so thanks see you guys